Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. Indeed, the room is beginning to vibrate higher. I speak again to the ones in the chairs before me. It is the second channel. of the many day event that you have come to be with. My partner fills with emotion because of what is here. We are allied even during the channeling. That's the way channeling works. The channeler may have stepped away in some form, but that cannot shield that human being from what is in the heart and what is felt by spirit. And he's aware he must continue to do what he's doing right now. But there is an overwhelming appreciation of those in the chairs. There is the sense of honor for those who have come for a journey these four days. And the journey is one that is different for each, but so many will have answers. And there will be discovery. And the discovery is of what is here that perhaps you didn't know. On the planet now that you didn't know, the new paradigms that are starting to occur. Again, I speak to those of you who are in the chairs, but to those of you who are listening later. I want to talk about something I have not spoken of in this way before. I said to you, something is happening that is new on the planet and involves old souls first. Some have called it an awakening. That's a generic way of saying that you are in a place where you were starting to awaken to things you didn't know. It's more than that. There is something else. In this new energy where light is greater than dark, things are starting to come up that should have come up even in a darker energy but could not. And they are personal. Each individual human with free choice can follow any path they want to, but believe me, the Akash of the old soul, when it starts to come forward, starts to bring sparks. And that's what I'm going to call it, the beginning of sparks. And this is a metaphor for intuition, which starts you on a path of looking that you hadn't had before. It's a spark because it can, it can ignite something. Perhaps it ignites the engine of discovery. Every one of you, even one that might not have been here before, is an old soul. And sparks are occurring. And they don't happen to everyone at once. Now, for those listening later, this is for them as well. And there will be those who will relate to it and those who don't yet. And you'll remember this channel. So what are sparks? Sparks occur to each old soul in this energy as they allow them to do so. And the allowance happens with the softening of belief. 
with the allowance of belief. It is interesting. Things that never occurred to some of you are starting to occur. And this is what I mean. And there's so many different categories of sparks because there are so many different kinds of paths that you are all on. Each of you has the challenge of each of you. And what I mean by that is you create the path that you're on. You have an, an akash which is unique only to you. You bring into the planet that which you should bring in. And the spark that might be developed for you is about those things. But if you could define the spark, it would be those things which prod you to ask questions, to find information, perhaps even to come sit in the chair today. And it started with a spark that perhaps was not there a little while ago or there at all in an older energy. You may have been in metaphysics for a very long time and yet there really was no spark, not like this one, not like today, not like now. And you might say, well, who gets the spark? Any, any old soul who's ready. It comes slowly with intuition with an, a, an allowance, a softening, as I say, of perhaps previous ideas that were set in your mind, in your perception. Dear human being, what is it you think cannot change or should not change? What rule is it? Even that in metaphysics, what rule have you been brought up with? that sticks in you and says, this is the way things work. If you still have that, you're not giving an allowance for change, are you? What if everything you learned starts to shift just a little? And you might say, well, why would it do that? If it's something that is new age, it would, it would anchor itself. It wouldn't shift at all. And this is where I want to talk about a new paradigm. There are those who consider yourself meditators and healers, channelers, workers in the light, who believe that in this new energy, everything that you have learned is now going to be enhanced. And that the tools that you've been using, the way you've been using them, are now going to be enhanced. Now, this would make total and complete sense if it weren't for the fact that the tools are tools in the old energy. What if there were new tools? What does that mean in plain English, Cryon? What if there were different ways of healing, different ways of meditating? What if there's a new frequency to tune into that's a different paradigm that enhances you and everything that you are. There are so many frustrated old souls applying old energy methods of new age into a new energy of new age and finding the old tools are not working. And so the spark that would then guide you to the new tool will not take place until you say to yourself, I allow a paradigm shift of what I thought was permanent not to be permanent. The way I heal, the way I get into meditation, what I thought I knew about energy, I will then suspend and allow for new things to come in, like a spark. A spark that will open you in what you do to all the new tools. But there are some generic sparks that are starting to occur to old souls, not about what they're doing in a healing modality 
or what they're doing in a new age or esoteric modality, but about life, just life. And it has to do with perception. There's the spark of control. Some of you are starting to have revelations that are outside the box of anything that you imagined. And one of the big ones may sound simple, but it isn't. Not for an old energy human. The spark of control when you come to a realization almost by yourself without anybody saying anything that says, oh my, I now understand I could control my life. I can control it. It doesn't have anything to do with those around me who I think are in control. <laughs> it doesn't have anything to do with the paradigm I thought about when it comes to relationships and when it comes to, to, to vocation and the rules of this and that and who says to do what and when. And the spark that is so magnificent that says, I can control everything that is me. And I don't need an authority to say yes or no. I can go where I wish to and know that wherever I go intuitively will be correct. And I don't have to ask around. I can control my life, my decisions, what I do. I can start over if I want to. Dear ones, that is a major spark. And it talks about you being aware of creating a reality which is totally and completely yours. And there are those who would say, well, I've had the spark, but wow, oh, there's so much fear because this isn't there or that isn't there or because these are not the rules or I'll lose this or that. When you have the spark of control, you also learn that intuition and synchronicity are at your back now. You will meet people you need to meet, perhaps they're here in this room, that have answers for you you didn't have before of how you can control things you didn't think you could control. Moving perhaps into a different area or a different job, one that you didn't think you could do before because things simply hadn't lined up, but now they will. You would not have that spark of control and the thought that you could do this unless there was a plan. I have said over and over something that you should hear yet again. You don't know what you don't know. And what you don't know is magnificent. And it has to do with the things that come along that you need, that supply what you need when you need it a confluence of energy that smooths things out to you and for you and goes against the grain of everything you were taught about how things work. The spark of control. Oh, there are so many. I start with that one because there are so many who feel they're not in control. And they cannot move forward or for backwards or anything. They simply are in a box. And they're told what to do by culture, by those around them, by those family members who are strong. Or spiritual organizations that are strong. And suddenly there is the understanding, the freedom, the aha. Oh my, I'm free. I can control who I am, where I am, what I do, without fear of the future. That's a big one. And by the way, some of you in the chairs needed to hear that tonight. You see, I know who's here. And so let's let the sparks reflect who's here and continue. Another spark that flies in the face 
of everything you've been taught. It arrives with a bang, an intuition, a flash. Oh my, I may very well be, be able to slow or stop the aging of my body. Are you listening? Someone here needed to hear that. The body ages because the perception says it should. And the brain is wired to then cooperate with the perception. It ages because there's chemistry that counts the days. Did you know that? Literally, time cycles that count the days. And the perception is, here's how long you're supposed to live. A DNA that works at 33% or less is not as efficient in rejuvenating as a DNA that's at 40 or more. And so then, even for the new age person who knows this, they will say, it's too bad. I'm stuck at 33. Hey, oh my, I'm in control. <laughs> what if you were in control of 44? What if you could say to your own cellular structure and your brain and all of the things that bow down to the boss, you, we are going to operate differently from now on. We're not going to count the days. We are going to see a 44 instead of a 33, an efficiency that is going to slow down our aging, and I proclaim it because I'm the boss of me. You see, oh my, I'm in control. I can control my aging. And there are those who would listen to this and say, isn't this cute? <laughs> who ever thought of something like that? It's the spark that says you can do it. And there are hundreds, if not thousands, who are doing it. And the way you know is because as you start to project a new perception that you are ageless, there is no age attached to you at all. And when people ask how old you are, you say, yes. <laughs> Go ahead, take it from cryon. And do not write it down unless there's a form that demands it. And then when there is, cover it quickly and say, erase, erase, erase. <laughs> because that simply enhances an old energy perception of how old you're supposed to be. And when you're supposed to then start losing energy, and when then you're supposed to have this happen and that happen, and then if you watch enough of your media, you're told over and over what happens at a certain age. Why don't you stop watching that? Dear ones, you can stop the aging process as you know it today in your body. And there will be some of you who receive that spark. Oh my, all I have to do is talk to my own cellular structure because it listens to consciousness. Turn the page with me. Cryon 1993. Talk to yourselves. Begin to talk to yourselves. Very few are doing it because you look down at your body and simply hope it works. You never see it as you. Ally with it and become one and understand you are the boss of all processes within you. You congratulate them when they work. You work with them when there's challenge. You treat your cellular structure like you would a child and you're in charge. You affirm who you are, what is happening and what they are to do. When your toe hurts, you don't say, my toe hurts. You say, I hurt there in my toe. 
You start a paradigm shift that is a perception of who you are. One cell. You're the boss. 1993. And here we are again in a new energy where it's occurring to you all by itself. And let me tell you about how the spark works. You don't get a spark of intuition that talks to you unless you can do it. So that means you've come to the place where you've worked on yourself, erased the fears, and you're standing at a precipice saying, what is now? And you start to get sparks, more than one. Oh my, I'm in control. Oh my, I can control my aging. I can stop it. I can really slow it down. This has always been the case for a human being because consciousness is king. There is no greater power on the planet than the consciousness of humanity. There is no greater power within you than a high consciousness that literally talks to itself in its own cellular body structure and gives it the commands it needs to go from day to day. Do not fear your cellular structure. Become one with it. There are those in the chair here who needed to hear that. Spark. Crying, I'm very, very tired of what I believe I have, which is karma. Because I see it everywhere. It seems to be drawn to me, and certain kinds of things happen. And it's, it's in my family, and it's in me. I don't want it. And here's the news. A spark. 1993. You can drop your karma. In this new energy, this is going to occur to you, ones who have never read the book in 1993, who are perhaps just coming online with all of these new things, and you get it by yourself. I can drop my karma. You have control over these kinds of energetic things that are imbued into your akash which are carried over they're ancient they're real and you know it what would happen if you dropped your akash it karma the karma that comes from your akash what would happen if you dropped it well the first thing you'd be different you would be different to your family which has the karma that is part of what you don't like. And in that, you might have seen already that they're not necessarily excited to see you much because you stopped playing the game. And they'll spin in drama and you won't. They'll go and do what they do, which is karmic, and you won't. And the things that used to occur to you are now starting to drop away. And the things which were all part of who you used to be start to leave. That is the spark of dropping your karma. And what it does is to open doors for you. Doors you never thought were even there because karma enslaved you. The perception that there was an energy that sat on you, that controlled you. Oh my. I can control things in my own life. <laughs> Karma. Drop it completely. There would be those in ancient lands and the ancients of ancient lands who have taught this for centuries who may hear this and say, well, that's not the way it works. I would like to tell them and you to test it themselves 
just because it was there for centuries does not now mean that in the new paradigm, in the new energy, it must continue to exist. It was an old energy to put you into places that let you work puzzles. And now suddenly you are free of the puzzles. And the parameters are different, the paradigms are different, the tools are changing, and, oh my, I can control my own reality. Karma. Drop it. And then there are those who say, okay, I'm ready, wow, I want to do it, so what do I do? <laughs> and I'll say it again, why don't you drop your karma? And you would say, well, there has to be a process. Yes, it's called drop your karma. <laughs> it is the own pro it's its own process. It is self-evident. Dear higher self, dear body that I'm in, all the cells, I hereby drop my karma. And all that is around you goes, okay. <laughs> and all you had to do is say the word. Did you know that? And the reason is because you're the boss. And even things that, that those would tell you, well, that's, those, those are the rules of the Akashic record. And you say, and they all, yes, they are, and I'm in control of them. That is the difference. Oh, my. I'm in control of my own reality. Wow. Crying, I'm tired of suffering. It just seems like this is what I do. Oh my. Did you know you could stop suffering? Number one, that is not why you were created. I want to make this clear. As clear as I have ever said, God spirit, creative source, anything, any name you want to give that which is a creative source that is within you did not put you here to suffer, period. For yourself, for others, or for a deity. That's not how the love of God works, ever. And the humans that would tell you you gotta suffer a little in order to gain favor with God are in a paradigm that they learned from their fathers and they learned from their fathers and they simply accepted it because it sounded good. Use spiritual common sense. God is love. Would not put you here on this planet to suffer. So number one, it's man-made. It's not of God. And if you're suffering, it's a paradigm that your brain has accepted and the perception that you have had handed down through the ages says you got to suffer a little. Why don't you drop that right now? I'm talking to someone here, you know. Why don't you drop that? There is no reason to create an old energy suffering at all for you to move forward as an old soul. Let this day be the one that you realize it and the spark is there. Oh, no more suffering for me. And let your intuition tell you this. Ask it. Is it correct that we should suffer? Bam, no. And the higher self will tell you, the innate will tell you, all it is will tell you that comes from an old energy not from God. Oh, how do I do it? <laughs> What's the process? You stop suffering. Dear innate, dear higher self, dear any energy that is around me right now, I make a, pro a proclamation that from this point on, suffering will be replaced with joy. And what was is not going to be. And the things that would then set me up to suffer, that's karmic, and it's gone because I dropped my karma. You see, oh my, I'm in control. There's more. Do you see how you're reshaping the paradigms of spirituality itself in you. 
you're becoming closer to a source that was always pure love. And if anyone gives you rules of the source that say that you've got to bow, worship, suffer, I would like to tell you right now that comes from men. But now in this new light, the spark is going to tell you that even without this channel. And you're going to start seeing it. I don't need to follow this path. How would you like to wake up every morning with the same issues you might have today, right now? And the first thing you feel is not anxiety or suffering or fear or worry, but joy. And the joy leads you then to affirmations. Let this day be filled with solutions. This day I'm going to solve problems that I did not have the ability to solve yesterday. Because things are going to occur that didn't occur yesterday. Because I expect them to. You see, I'm in control of my own reality. And by the way, I don't have any more karma that would create bad things. By the way. The sparks are starting to occur in the lives of old souls by themselves, without a guru, without a channel, without instructions, being self-evident because you are starting to operate closer to God. Some of you are feeling it and that's why you're in the chair. That's why you came to this meeting, that's why you've come here. Because you knew something was up. You felt it. There was a spark pushing you forward that said, what if I'm bigger than I was told? What if other things are taking place? What if I'm in control? Some have said, well, that's blasphemous. You're not supposed to be in control. God is supposed to be in control. Well, let me tell you, inside you is God. Are you starting to understand who is in control? You both are. Because the higher self of you gives you the sparks and gives you the permission and gives you the awareness to start changing a reality. And there are those who said only God can do that, and I agree. And I'll say, and that's why you are God. That, to many, is blasphemous. And today, in a new energy, it's going to be the common mantra of old souls. Inside me is a piece of the Creator that is eternal and that's what I follow. I don't follow a doctrine, a book of any kind, even a New Age one, even a cry on one. I follow the God inside and that is pure. And everything that I have I control with the intent to listen to that voice and be that thing that I know is in line with the creative source which is in me and talks to me. And that's why I'm not going to age much anymore. <laughs> because I dropped my karma. <laughs> and I'm in control. I'll finish with one last one. The spark of the revelation of family. There are those in this room who already know what I'm about to say, and I want to say this to those who are listening outside this room. Your biological family is wonderful. And to some of you, you've had a good one, and to some of you, you've had dysfunctional and challenging ones. But the spiritual family is pure and forever, and it may not be in the biological family. I want you to get up and find it because it'll change your life it'll smooth things over it'll create benevolence in your control of your own life because suddenly you'll have family who knows you and loves you and also follows the creative source inside them too and you can look at that family member and see the God in them and acknowledge it in you that's the family and if you're lucky enough to have that in the biological family, you are so fortunate. And it's not an accident. <laughs> for they were brought here for that. So that they would know 
that their mother or their father or their sister has something and they would be motivated to go find it in you and, and then there they would sit understanding what I'm talking about now. It's beautiful, but it's uncommon. And the reason is because old souls don't come in necessarily with old souls. They come in all over the planet, spread around, so that they will literally get out of situations that they were in, be forced to create their own light with the sparks I'm talking about, find family, and therefore move things around instead of sitting in one place and simply enjoying the light. <laughs> Does this start to make sense on what has happened in your life? Have you been moved around? Have you had some challenges that pushed and pulled you in ways that were unexpected? old lighthouse that you are? Do you find something happening now that is different? It's going to start settling down because now is the time to take your power. You might have feel pushed and pulled in the old energy. You were. It was difficult to win in an old energy and you survived. But today with this new light that has caused since 2012, that has been caused, literally, by you lifting yourself out of an old consciousness in this new energy, you are starting to take charge of the light. So that everything you do is no longer going to be then something that is opposed by that which is of lower consciousness. Some of you are starting to see this less opposition to a strong light that you have. Not one that is angry or powerful in a way that is, that is forceful, but one that has so much compassion and love, it cuts like a knife through the old energy and the old consciousness. And those who feature the darkness stand out of your way because they can see who you are. We've given you so much information in the past on how this works. Finally, I'll tell you this. I recognize the shamanic energy in the room, and it's in all of you. And there is something that comes with it, dear ones. There is an old energy perception that is in your karma that's etched in stone. And as you start awakening with the light in this new energy, bells go off. And those bells is what I want you to concentrate on voiding today. The bells go off that said this didn't work last time. Because if you were a shaman the last time, you probably had a short life. You were different. You are alone, by the way. Shamanic energy does not create partnerships. You live on the outskirts of the village. They only see you when they need healing. And then if something goes wrong with the weather, you're to blame. And they'll get another shaman. It doesn't work very well, does it, in an old energy to awaken to the magic of healing, of intuition, of knowing things that they don't of trying to help and instead being burned for it. And all of you carry at some level fear of enlightenment. We've called this before, we've told you about it before, but now we tell you it's time to void it because you're not going to move forward very fast. And the sparks, well, there won't be very many until you understand that was then, this is now. And so when that feeling starts to occur, watch your dreams, because the dreams will try to beat you up on this. The dreams will be dark, and they'll get in the way of this, and they won't make sense, but you'll wake up with a residue of the dream. And you may actually think, well, maybe it's because I'm starting to walk into the light. Maybe I shouldn't do this. 
There are, there are pieces and parts of you that will carry over to stop you from hurting yourself. That is simply survival, spiritually hurting yourself. But that is not how it is today. So recognize it for what it is and call it. Cryon, how do I do that? <laughs> dear Akash, dear higher self, dear innate, dear corporeal structure, every cell in my body, listen up. There is no fear of enlightenment in me because now I'm in an energy that supports me instead of one that was against me. Therefore, the fear belongs to the old energy, not this energy. I am free of this and ready to move forward. Strike my light with the spark that I know. Wow. I can control everything about me. It's my turn. Once you discover this in so many areas, piece by piece, not only in this series of meetings, but as you go forward in life right now, it is different than anyone told you it could be. Old rules do not apply at all. I want you to analyze what that might mean in your own life right now and how it might free you of the things that currently enslave you. I know who's here. Let the process of self-discovery begin. That's enough for now. Have a nice spark. And so it is. <laughs>